Carla Thailand got a fortune cookie on an accidental road trip through Missoula that said, soon you will be sitting on top of the world. Weeks later, she happened into a fire lookout job on an 8,000 foot peak in the Selway Bitternet Wilderness. She has been sneaking in and out of the back door to Missoula ever since. Please welcome Carla Thailand. My fear when we, I found out we were doing this at the Wilma was that I'd look out and I'd see like seven or eight people and now the fear has changed to be like exponentially larger. But, um, <laughs> so um, taking it back to 2002, I happened upon this, uh, probably the biggest stroke of luck in my life, which I didn't realize at the time, but uh, I was practically handed a job on a fire lookout. And I later hear, you know, all these people saying, like, how did you get that job? Like, you know, they've been trying and they've been scheming and they, their parents have been, like, breeding the genetic components to, like, make this child that can get a fire lookout job. And, and all I did was go to a, a potluck in Darby, Montana. <laughs> and that was, I mean, that was probably the most challenging part of this all happening. Um, but there, you know, I was in the right place at the right time, the right people, and months later, you know, I'm trudging up this mountain, and, uh, you know, after a 64-mile drive from Darby, and then a nine-mile hike, and I've got my dog Bandit with me, and, you know, we're post-holing through this, these four-foot snowdrifts, and, and then I started to have a feeling about just how special this thing was that was happening. Um, and, you know, originally I was just like, wow, I have a place to live for the summer, no rent, no utilities. I mean, there actually are no utilities, so <laughs> no bills. And, uh, and it was wonderful. And, and I was actually a terrible lookout um, for the first, the first bit. You know, I unrolled all the maps and I, you know, looked through the binoculars and did everything I was supposed to do. Um, and I, you know, I had my concerns when I first started, I asked my supervisor, I said, well, am I qualified? And he was like, can you read? And I said, yeah. You know, but the problem might have been that I read too much and I was often reading. Um, and I, I remember one time specifically, I was, I had my nose in a book and, uh, um, I heard that spot mountain, this is Bitterroot Air Patrol. And I looked up from my book and I see this column of smoke that like I could probably reach out and touch and, and the plane is circling it. And, and uh, so, I, so I got on the radio and I said, oh, um, Air Patrol, I was just working up a smoke report for you for that smoke over there on, you know, it's like Bad Luck Ridge. Of course, it's called Bad Luck Ridge. So the other thing I really wanted to do while I was on the fire lookout is I, I thought I would write a book and I think... Later, I'm like, about what? Like, I wasn't, I was just like, I'm going to write a book. You know, I don't, don't ever tell anybody you're going to write a book. Keep that a secret. But, and uh, I didn't write a book. In fact, I didn't even come close. Um, I did a lot of journaling. And I had these composition books. And I would write endless descriptions of, of these, these things about my days that at the time I thought were just really tedious. And you know, usually it'd be prefaced with at least three pages of you know, self-flagellation about like, you're not writing, you have all this time, you have all this space, you have your muse here, you know, bandit the dog, and you can't even write a book. And then I would write some description about like, I don't know, making green jello um, that I found in the cabinet that expired in 1985 and it actually worked. And um, you know, things like that. And uh, I had this brilliant summer, and then I actually was asked back for another summer and another, and pretty soon I had spent three seasons on, on this fire lookout and, um, and did not write a book. Um, but I managed to fill 37 composition books full of journaling, um, and as before mentioned, the self Flagellation. I mean, I'm also a Midwesterner, and this comes very easily and naturally to us. Um, so we can now, this scene is closing, the curtain drops, the lights go down, and when the lights come back up again, 
It's 2011, and I'm in Billings, Montana, which is nothing like being on top of a mountain. Um, and I am, I'm in, I'm in a, a professional job. I'm a public health nurse. And I have an office. Of course, it's a county job, so there's no window in the office. But I know the Beartooth Mountains are close. And um, I'm feeling a little bereft of adventure at this point. You know, I thought, like, I'm going to be a public health nurse, and I'm going to go save people. I, I will go under the bridge, deliver the baby. Whatever it takes, I'll do it. But it really, it amounted to... Um, a lot of work behind a computer and in an office. And this, as it happens, like at the end of the day, when it just starts getting darker, and you don't notice it because it's so incremental. And it just, it's like a dimmer switch. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's like the gaining of weight too, you know, a little bit, a few pounds at a time, a few pounds at a time. And then all of a sudden, it's dark and none of the pants fit. And it's just, <laughs> it's, it was just this big, flat change in my life. And I unearthed this box of said journals, the 37 composition books written on Spot Mountain. And I, I, I had this fear that I would lose them. And I, you know, to a fire or something. And incidentally, this is very true. The, the apartment building we lived in in Billings did burn down. Not while we lived there, but later. So I must have been feeling something. And so I started typing and typing and typing. And I would come home at night and just type, 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 type. Wake up in the morning, 5 a.m., type, 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 before work. Um, and that is not my natural way. I don't like spring out of bed and go work out. It's, but uh, I kept typing and typing and typing, and I thought, to what end? And, and here comes the, the pop culture reference. I hope most of you get it. I, start, I started feeling like, you know, in The Karate Kid? We, you know, when, when Daniel is like, you know, Mr. Miyagi is his sensei, and he's having him, like, paint the fence, you know, wax the car, and you're like... And he just starts feeling like he's Mr. Miyagi's bitch, and he's like, what, what's happening? <laughs> and uh, that was kind of how I felt. And one weekend... My boyfriend, Chris, was going to the Gorge. That's in Washington, right? We're in Billings. To go see Rush. And I, and I, I opted out. I opted out. And um, I stayed home. And it's like that fantastic thing that happens sometimes when you stay home alone. And you just let yourself just sort of go feral. And you, you just eat whatever you want. And you, and you just you stay up late. And you don't shower. And... and uh, and, and I thought, oh, I have this. It was almost like binge watching a Netflix series because I was like, oh, I can go back to the journals and I can work on my journals. And at this point, I had become really attached to these journals. And in a different way, like, it was almost like there was enough distance between me and this young, courageous woman, so full of life and so wide open, that I, I, I found a fondness for her that I didn't have for myself at the time. And... And I, I went to these journals um, eagerly. And this evening, the particular evening, I, <laughs> I had just given a talk to a bunch of school children about the, the dangers of energy drinks. And I thought, I've never had a Red Bull. I should, tr I should try it. And so I went to the holiday store by our house and I found Red Bull. And the cans were really small, so I bought two. <laughs> I, I did, I bought two. And, and actually, Red Bull, most of you probably know this, it's not red. I imagine I'd like pour this glass of like, like the color of this poinsettia plant, but it's not. And I started drinking the Red Bull, and I just started like getting so engrossed in these stories. And, um, you know, there was this part where, you know, uh, the, the pot, I, a friend had brought me these pot brownies, which I, I'm not even in, into, but... But I, I wanted to eat them so badly, not because I wanted to be stoned, but because I had nothing sweet and nothing chocolate. And I, and I ate them. I like, kept cutting these little pieces, and I deeply regretted it later. But, <laughs> but I ate the pot brownies. And, and, then I, and then I'm reading more stories about like reading The Art of Happiness by the Dalai Lama, and they're throwing it against the wall, and, like, and then smoking a cigarette that the packer left behind, you know? Like, he... And, and uh, you know, I was, I was reading all these stories and, 
remembering my dog Bandit, who, you know, was at that time sitting in a um, cedar box of ashes, you know, on my desk. And, and I had compassion for this woman who felt so um, angry with herself for not writing this book. And I'm, I, I was writing, typing up this part where I had taught myself how to knit, and I'm knitting tirelessly. And it's like, you know, one of those seven foot long scarves that nobody's ever gonna wear. And, and I had this Petzl headlamp and I'm just knitting through the night. And in the story, I, I look to the east and I see this red glow and I panic because I'm thinking, how could I miss that fucking fire? I mean, it's like open flames. It's, it's not just smoke, but then I realize it's the sun coming up. And I'm, and I'm typing this story on my Red Bull manic, you know, mania, Red Bull mania. And, and in, my, in real life, you know, seven years after, I'm in my apartment in Billings, Montana, and it's getting light. And I look outside and I realize it's morning. And I think to myself, this is it. This, this is the book. The book it was already written. The book was already written. And I looked at those 37 notebooks and I thought about that courageous woman and her beloved dog who spent all that time together and spent all that energy writing down the experiences. And it just made me think like whatever it is that we think, we're, we're pinning our hopes to what, you know, something we're gonna accomplish or our lives will be perfect when this happens, or once we reach this point. And it made me realize then, as it does now, whatever that thing is, you might already be doing it. So, thanks. <laughs>